I'm joined by Elisabeth Petz here in the press center after a fantastic win against Nana Zagnice, actually taking away her second spot because she was second in the in the standings. So Elizabeth, after four or five consecutive draws, many of them with uh, maybe not so much ambitious play on your side, at least that's the sensation I got from the outside. You come today, you play a very strong attacking game. You do a very nice combination where you win a queen for a piece and, and a knight, and then you finish off with good style. Give me your assessment on today's game, and if these four or five draws have given you more energy for the last part of the tournament. Well, actually, um, uh, taking into account that uh, I had these four rather quick draws, I have to maybe tell a small story. <laughs> I mean, in the second game against Alexandra, I had uh, huge problems with my um, circulation and uh, I was quite dizzy when I came to the game. And even after I blundered this, uh, this, this, this bishop, you know, I was still not understanding why actually she could take. So I understood that something was totally wrong with, uh, with my circulation and uh, against Tan, I still felt it. And against Harika, I decided like, okay, it should be the last day until like I will be fine again. Again. And um, then actually I had uh, Chan Saya and against Chan Saya I have a bad result in general. So I was quite happy to, to finish it and also Maria and Anna actually are opponents where I never win. So I, especially against Maria I have a very bad result so I thought like that I should not take it too strongly so I decided again to go for these kind of uh, trollish positions. And against Anna at least I uh, I don't lose much with Black um, at least uh, in the latest five years. So for me it was actually not so bad because I could save a lot of energy. I had like uh, four rather not uh, long games and especially like you know I consider myself rather old in this tournament. I mean, I'm the second oldest after uh, Sasha, so I understand that energy level is important and mm -hmm. that's why actually um, now there are four games left and I still feel kind of fresh because, okay, I had not such tough uh, games. And uh, today I thought like, because, okay, usually when I play against Nana, we always go all in. So it's a kind of, you know, lottery how it will go because it can be anything. And usually when playing Nana, the position often turns out to be completely crazy and wild because we have a similar style and that's why, um, yeah, I thought like, why not? <laughs> I actually wrote on my report already uh, and he said it went all out for the win with a very aggressive approach. So, uh, but that was the sensation I had from the, from the start. So I assume you're, you're feeling better now uh, from, the, from this dizziness you had in previous rounds. Yes, no, no, I, it took me like a couple of, of days to, to, to be fine again. And then actually like everything was fine again. I mean, sometimes there is this problems and uh, well, I will not get into detail, but I would say it's, it's a kind of common problem a lot of us are facing sometimes. And uh, I was happy when like everything was over and now I'm feeling very fine again. I went to the gym now the, uh, for the previous three days, so I'm uh, good. physically good again. So let's get back to the game. I have two questions, specific questions about the game. The first question, when you play C3 and she sacrifices the rook, obviously that is not a forced move for her. She must have realized that she's going to get, have to give the queen for the rook and the beast and the pawn. So I assume that she thought she had a decent position there. What were you thinking at that moment? Uh, well, actually, I thought that she doesn't even have a choice after oh. queen h4 because I, I wasn't sure if she doesn't sacrifice. I mean, like, I have a threat, rook f5, and okay. uh, she cannot go queen e7 because I take on h5 and the queen is under okay. is pinned. Okay. And uh, knight, uh, queen e6 runs into knight e4. So in my opinion, she already didn't have a choice. So I think crucial from her point of view, or maybe too optimistic, was Short Castle. Okay. I think she relied too much that knight a4 is always there and I cannot do anything with my queen. But I saw already this um, this motive for rook takes c3 and then this switch and suk rook f5. And then I thought like in this position, okay, queen h4 is interesting. And I saw also like that she could sacrifice the queen. I would have done it on her place a little bit different. I would have taken on a5, which in my opinion gives her better practical chances. But... Um, in general, after short castle, it becomes very dangerous for her and objectively speaking, much easier for me. So if she just exchanged the queens and plays 97, 95, she will not lose this game. Maybe even like from the positional point of view, it's, it's easier to play for her, even though I believe it's ab about equal. My second question, of course, when you win the queen, you end up with this queen against rook. Many spectators were suggesting that maybe the position is already 
to be resigned, but Nana kept fighting on, and I was starting to remember that, of course, the position has to be won. There's too many pawns. But you were wary that some fortresses could appear if you're not playing with, uh, with the precision. Is that correct? Would that be a correct assessment of your point of view? Or you maybe thought, this is very easy, I win any, with any move? What well, were your thoughts there? You know, honestly, in this moment when she kept on playing, I remembered the game up to Malik against Conoru. When everybody thought, like, why is actually like, Conoru playing on? And I understood that sometimes, you know, there might be positions where there are some force stresses and stuff like this. I mean, I knew, of course, that since we have a lot of pawns, this typical force stress rook against queen is out of questions, and I will always win, like, a good version of a pawn ending. But yet, of course, there was a war. There are some some small dangers and I have to be precise in a conscious play like this. But of course I knew that it was winning and it's not like a hard thing to do technically, but it's better to be cautious because probably like when I saw the game of Shanzaya against Konaru, I somehow thought like it's like this, but then actually I realized the more I watched this game that actually there are sometimes positions which are, you know, not as obvious as uh, they may seem. And maybe especially because I saw this game in this tournament, I was a little bit more aware that I should be careful. Fantastic. A very nice performance and good luck in the last few games. Thank you. Thank you.